So hello, here we are again, and today it's going to be crunchy, we're talking about networking, so that will be quite interesting, I hope. Um, so let's just see, I think, okay, that's better. <clears throat> um, yeah, so let's dive into it. So this is what we, what we had prepared last time. We said, what is the goal of our whole project here? It's to really write an MMO. And obviously, when you write an MMO, you need some, some networking component. <clears throat> That's actually one of the most important parts of, of it <laughs> at all. Um, so there's massively multiplayer online game. And uh, so that implies it's online. There is a lot of players. So you need some stable networking for sure. So let's jump right into it. Um, I will actually try to make this as an endless endless image here so that we always have the full history of what we did. Let's see how far we can get with that. Um, the software promises that it's really kind of endless. So let's, let's continue. So that's actually day two of our journey. And today it will be about networking. So that's obviously a very deep topic. Um, that's okay. I think my camera has a problem. Just a second. Let's see if I can make that work again. It's a bit of an improvised camera, I have to say. Let's see if that works. Um, let's see if that works. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I will we'll just continue without the camera. <laughs> we just don't care now. Um, uh, let's just see what is going on. Okay. Well, I don't know. It should work. Okay. Um, no problem. We will just continue anyway. So um, we have the networking stuff here uh, for this game. That, that's very important, obviously. So what we have here is different possibilities on how to set up a network uh, in, in general. So I don't want to go into the super, super details, but let's let's a bit start from, from somehow from the beginning so that everyone can follow along if he likes to. Um, I think that makes sense. And also it helps helps myself to 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 actually get into the topic better because that, that's a huge topic actually. So let's really start from the basics. So we have one computer, let's say it's computer one. Now we have a second computer, it's computer two. And those computers, they, they need to exchange some data. There are certain possibilities uh, to do that. Um, they could send it directly. I mean, computer one could, could send some data to computer two, but if there is more than, than this, we will see that quite quickly things get a little bit complicated because if something happens in computer one and it needs to inform all the other computers, it has to send something here, has to send something there, has to send something there. If something happens here, uh, the same goes on. And so that's really getting messy and we, we have a lot of traffic quite soon. So this is actually called a P2P network um, or P2P setup. So that's useful in some circumstances to be honest, but um, it's not working um, very well in, in, in certain types of games. So the more demanding the games are in general, really, that, that really falls apart quite, quite quickly. So what we are more heading towards is, is something different. So what, what we are heading for is like what we call a client server architecture. <clears throat> And this works a bit differently. So you still have a bunch of computers. So, but they don't directly speak to each other or crisscross, but there you have like in the middle, there is this one, one machine and this is the server. And what, what this allows us to do is that we have a much more controlled pattern of how, how communication works. So each time something happens on one client, okay, it informs the server. Each time something happens on, 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 on another computer, it also informs the server. The server then collects all this information. 
and so uh, oops sorry that would also inform the server of course and as soon as the server gets all the information I mean it kind of bundles everything together from each of the clients it updates its, its world state the state of the game it updates it um, and it does it in a, on a certain frequency and then it has like all the potential to really optimize the communication towards the computer so it could say for example in a most simple scenario which will be the first one that we will probably implement it is like um, we will we will just um, say okay um, after all, all the updates are, are collected from the client and the world is updated accordingly so like say the player one moved a bit uh, player one moved a bit to the right let's say player two I don't know jumped in the air player through three shot a bullet okay that's a bullet um, and so on so all the world state is updated then it can just grab all the state make a nice compressed package out of it so that's the new world state let's call it WS and this is then just sent out to all the clients well that's the most easy and let's say naive approach which actually doesn't bring us so much but but it works and we will as I said we will maybe just start with that to have something stable running uh, because we don't optimize just right from the beginning that makes things just unnecessarily complicated and sometimes doesn't even work at all anyway okay so but just just as uh, as an information of what we will do in future probably is that we will say okay let's have a let's have a more a detailed look of what is actually going on in the world let's say that the world looks like this so let's say this is this is our whole game world and let's let's pretend we look at it from from the from the top and then we have our players here and let's say there is player one and he looks in that direction so that's his field of view let's say and there is player two let's say that these are the only ones online now and he looks in that direction and let's say that there are some some npcs and then some some stuff is going on like like these are characters or these are machines that are traveling and whatnot so we see the player one has a certain uh, field of view and he sees certain things in the world he definitely does not see everything i mean he just sees in this area here player two sees completely different things and now let's assume that a player one for example i mean he, he made something on on his client that made for example this thing here this one npc let's say this is this is disappearing yeah? so he he maybe shot it so it's gone um so this event and we will come to that how, how that actually works but let's say this event is, is going on it's going to the server and this information is going to the server and the server says ah, okay so let's say this is an npc with the id i don't know one two three so that was there and now it's it's gone okay let's say that's gone now but this is quite an interesting information especially for player one because that's that's in his his field of view i mean it, it it needs the confirmation from the server that this npc is now really gone but as you can see for player two that's not an interesting information at all i mean i'm not saying it's not interesting but it's, it's something that he doesn't clearly he, he doesn't see so there could be some optimization where the server says okay i'm sending out specific world state information to player one which consists of information for npc one to three that's actually gone and i will send another package out to player two which is quite small probably because there there was not something happening at all in the in the world let's say in the in the last frame um and he can completely skip the information that this uh npc one two three this one here is no longer in the world because he, player two did not see it at all in the first place well that's just an example of of how you can um save essentially bandwidth uh for example so if that's player two so you would really save bandwidth in terms of, of what you send uh, along that line here uh, because over the network i mean you know really every bit and every byte matters um it really makes a difference if you send one byte or if you send uh, 500 bytes uh, if you send it 30 times in a second it, it really it really sums up quite quickly 
Okay, so to sum it up once more, what we will do is a very primitive, let's say, client server architecture in the first step. Maybe we will not have it so primitive in the end, but let's say um, for now it is. Uh, oh, hi, coined coined. I, I hope I pronounced it right. Hi, welcome to the stream. Um, and I believe you followed me. So thanks a lot. Very much appreciated. Um, just feel free to ask any questions um, you like. Um, I hope I can answer them. Um, so that's, that's what we're heading for. So we are doing some uh, primitive client server architecture. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Um, and we will improve on that. We will probably just um, create something, something more sophisticated along the way. But uh, as you already know, probably we're moving in, in, in baby steps, um, but steadily. Um, but the baby steps are really much, much easier to, to follow for everyone. And it's also in that live coding environment, it's much easier to do for me because yeah, that's actually a bit of a, uh, of a stressful situation to do all these things live, but, uh, it's, it's also fun. And, and yeah, I also learned a lot doing it. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is, uh, not dive a bit into, into network architecture a bit more, and then what we're going to, to, to implement really. So. You might have heard of that. Um, so the whole network thing is, is, is really like a layer cake. So it, it really uh, consists of, of several layers. There is hardware involved. Obviously, there is cables or there is wireless protocols. And, um, and there is really like a network layer stuff like, like Ethernet or, or token ring or whatever. We will not go into that detail. That's, that's too low level even for us. We will actually uh, just mention the IP layer because it gives us some important abstractions. Mainly it provides us with IP addresses. So we are probably used to that. That's something like, I don't know, 121, 161, zero. So that's IPv4. I mean, it also gives us ports and I will come to that what ports are. So this is actually a 16 bit number. Um, so this, this is actually just an identifier of a specific application that, that listens on uh, uh, for network traffic, essentially. Um, so that's something that, that we take for granted. Uh, we use the IP protocol, that that's what we will do. But from there we would have two, basically two options um, to have a more a sophisticated layer on top and one is the is the tcp layer and one is the so-called udp layer and uh, the tcp layer is actually quite quite some nice thing i mean it is is really reliable as reliable as a network can be um i mean it's it's a physical network it's if it's the internet it really goes all around the planet so things can happen, but it really tries its best to, to provide a reliable service. Um, it also actually tries to guarantee the sequence of, of, of orders, uh, the sequence of messages that it is held. Um, and it is also quite slow. And why is it slow? Well, because it has all these nice features there. Um, so that's, that's something that is actually a pro and a con. And uh, of course the pro is that if if you send something over the network, let's say from computer one to computer two, and that happens to be really on the, on the other side of the world, and you really go through the network, that means you go through a lot of routers, computers, routers, computers, uh, internet service providers, and so on and so on. And so it's really quite, quite possible that packages are either lost somewhere, they get mixed up so they are sent out as one two three but they are shuffled up because one packet actually takes another route and so on it takes longer probably so and that's maybe the third package just goes a direct way so it arrives first and then comes the first package let's say and the last one takes the longest and that's that's the second package and that's normally not what you want so when you send out something in a specific sequence um well, that's, that's how you want it to arrive normally. Um, and that's actually what, what TCP is quite good at, at, at securing for you. It really makes, makes it happen that this really is, is, is 
is reaching the target computer and the target program in sequence. But to achieve this, if you imagine this example, well, it has to do certain things. It, like, okay, it somehow knows because the headers in, in the packets, okay, well, the, the supposed sequ sequence, sorry, is one, two, three. Okay, that's a supposed sequence. But, but uh, it knows that what I got is three. Okay, so that's already wrong. I mean, three is, is not the first one in the sequence. So I will actually wait and then try to ask for probably a resend of the other packets. And then if two comes, it says, okay, that's that's quite okay, but I, I still wait for the first package. And then when it subsequently comes, it says, okay, that's fine, but I know the right order is this. And this is what it will actually provide to the, to the listening program. So that could be our game server and that could be a client um, and, and but you can think of, okay, that's very reliable, but this, all this action, this really takes time. This is really kind of complicated uh, to do. Um, this reliability features, uh, when you want to implement them yourself, um, and we will do that actually, and not today, but uh, eventually, then you will see that that's actually not so easy to do. And it also, of course, it takes some performance. It takes some, some computing power. That's all what you get for free, kind of, in terms of, you don't have to program it by this TCP, but you don't definitely don't get it for free in terms of performance because that's, that's really costing you. And so this is why you have to be very selective about which, which package you send over which protocol. Um, so what that implies that everything is reliable and in sequence, I mean, that implies, okay, we might use that actually, or we, it, it would be useful, for example, to, to, to use it when there is very important information. And I will come to that, what is, what is important and what might not be so important. So that if there is really important information, well, you might actually either use TCP or just implement something by yourself that is very similar to TCP and it has the same features only if it's important information, but if it's really more important to get the information than to, than to, than to have the best performance, probably. Um, but we will come to that a bit later. But then there is the, the other kit on the blog, and that's the UDP stuff. And the UDP stuff, I mean, it's, it has also features, if you would like to call them that way. And okay, here I am. <laughs> um, I think the camera is lagging like hell, but well, maybe better than nothing. Um, so it has a very good feature on the quotes, which is that it is really unreliable. Um, it is really unsequenced. It actually stores only small pieces of data. And, and that's now the real feature, um, but it's, it's, it's quite fast. And it's fast because it has all these other characteristics. Um, so what it essentially does, it, it is really very, very thin layer over IP in which just sends packets of data essentially with just some information, um, to which IP address and port a certain packet, uh, shall go. And UDP doesn't add, add much to that. Um, it really just sends out from one computer to the other. It just sends out a packet. I mean, it tries to send it out. So as we know, the internet works as a, as a network of many computers and hardware routers and so on. So it, it tries to, to route the packet through all these in between nodes. And if it happens, which, which can happen that somewhere along the way, the packet is dropped. Well, that's it. I mean, that's, that, that's it. There is nothing happening in terms of the protocol. Um, that packet is gone. So let's say you send out packet one with, with a byte sequence one, two, three, you wanted to send it out to computer two. It is lost along the way. You as computer one, you will never learn that this has happened, that this has not reached its target. Um, computer two, on the other hand, it will never learn or it will never know that you actually send out the packet. Um, if it receives a packet, well, that's it. That's fine. It has it. Um, if it does not receive a packet, well, it doesn't receive it and it does not know that someone else has ever sent it. Um, so in order to have something more reliable and it's something 
that goes more in the direction of like um, like what TCP does, well, you have to invent all these things by yourself. But I will come to that later. Let's for now just go back to the to the topic of what is important information and, and what is not important information. That's maybe something that that is important to know, actually. So we have um, important versus unimportant or not so important. Okay. So what, what, what can be important and what can be unimportant? So let's say um, there is a certain types of gameplay events, let, let's call them. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things happening in a game. Let's say, let's make a short list of what can probably happen in a game and let's what can happen in an MMO. Okay, so let's say players are moving probably all the time. Well, they're jumping, they are moving left, right, forward. It's a 3D game. Yeah, they can they can move in all, in all degrees of freedom. Um, players are probably firing weapons that depends on the game but let's say we, we we can do that and there is something that is not maybe directly gameplay related but let's say a, a player logs in player is logging in or logging out um and or well, let's say a player is is entering a, is entering a dungeon instance let's say Okay, so then I would say, I mean, we can discuss that. We can also have a discussion in the chat. I mean, there, this is also a bit of, it, this really depends on the type of game and this depends on the type of, um, of gameplay. And um, yeah, and, and there is certain room for opinions uh, on that. Um, but what I would say is um, that the important messages or the important information is, is something like that. Um, something like that and that's a bit that's a bit middle ground but i would say it's also quite important but in a way what is not so important is is the player movement and that does not mean that it's it's it doesn't matter where the player is moving but what i mean is and that's also maybe one one kind of measurement that you can that you can do is that one kind of number that or one kind of indication of, of how important an action is, is that how frequent it happens so let the player movement let's say that that's happening very very frequently so that's happening so if we have a 60 frames per second game probably the, the, the player position is updated i don't know 50 times i mean it depends how active the player is but that, that can really happen a lot so imagine someone really smashing the buttons and really or moving a joystick um that can really happen all the time. Um, so there is a lot of, so if that's a timeline and we have all the different kinds of information, let's say we have the, the movement information and we have the, the, the firing weapon information and we have a login information. So how often are these, these events happening? Um, and let's say that's, that's just a few frames. Yeah? It doesn't really matter. Um, let's say that's, that's one, that's each time a frame then we will see the, the following phenomena that normally um, these these movement events they happen really often yeah they really happen very often normally okay maybe then in one frame the player stands still but normally they tend to happen very often and if this is an action game i don't know like like whatever like a like a multiplayer shooter this i mean players will almost move all the time like 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 <laughs> like really uh, constantly. Um, firing weapons, that's something different. I mean, that's normally not happening so often. That's maybe happening, I don't know, some frames, because normally you don't have <laughs> ammunition limitlessly and, and so on and so on. Um, that's really what, what makes this information uh, more important because, I mean, if someone's firing a weapon in a, in a shooter, um, that's quite important information. I mean, this information certainly the player wants that this information comes goes from his client to the server so that he registers it and that the server can check okay did did that shot eventually hit another player i mean that's a very important information let's imagine you you have a very good position you're aiming very very well you're shooting what in fact is happening there is a network packet going out from the client to the server well, let's say it never reaches its 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 target. The server never knows that that, that you shot. Well, then 
normally how the clients are written, and we will come to that a bit later as well, normally the clients will render the action that you did the shot more or less instantly, so that you have a very good feeling uh, of, of instant feedback, like, okay, really, okay, I shot. But the server never got the packet, and you might even, or you, you think you have, you have hit another player, but you might uh, actually never, never know that. And then you have just not, not fired officially, like from, from the point of view of the server. But that's very important information. Like the login information, okay, that that's happening, like <laughs> almost never, kind of. I mean, that's really happening at the beginning of, 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 the, of the whole game. And then not at all. So that's, of course, very, very important, because if you're not logged in, well, you're not in, in the game at all. Um, so just to give you an idea uh, that there could be uses for some important information and for some s sequencing and reliability uh, implementation that is actually important and that there is also a useful uh, need for something like UDP because what you see here with UDP that's, which is actually very practical is that you see that because of this big number of of events it's actually quite useful that we know okay they are sent quite uh, quite fast there is no one really waiting for a packet if if let's say if this is the position as we said of, of, of one player um, well then if, if there is a certain number of so let's say this this comes from the computer on the player number one and let's say there is just three other players and three other computers currently in that match then this information will be sent very high frequently to the server the server will try to process it as quickly as possible obviously and it will send out all the packages normally to all the clients um, but if something happens here and let's say if, if one of these packages is lost here and another one is lost here and another one is lost there um, or it doesn't come in sequence so let's say that that we are in the point in time like here and and what the and uh, let's say client number four missed that that update here and client number three missed that update here well that's not so important as long as for example they got they got this update here um or they just got this and this is missed but then that's that's the that's the latest one that they got and normally if you don't have a super crappy network i mean it's not like you have a packet loss of 100 percent. i mean that's not normal that <laughs> anyway then then you're screwed um but like if you have a normal network where the occasional packet is lost if you're maybe playing on from from the other side of the planet um then that's that's really not so important because what you're interested in is just like the best the latest best information that you can get and then that client for here in that case okay he will just take what he gets he will see what was the last position that i have and then he will do some interpolation techniques essentially to say okay well the player was at that position in the last information I got, okay, now he's supposed to be here. And then, well, there are some tricks to say, well, do I render him directly here? Or maybe I will do some like in between rendering and I will say, okay, that, that would be a too harsh of a, of a jump. That's too much. I will render it a bit uh, interpolated. I, I will render uh, some two or three or five or whatever intermediate positions. Um, this is, this is how uh, this is how the clients work and this is how we um, how we deal with UTP versus TCP. Um, so what we will actually do is today we will actually concentrate on, on UDP um, for today because that's I mean it actually doesn't really matter I mean both 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 protocols are, are, are viable. Um, we will start with UDP because um, there is a trend. I mean, I'm, I'm not definitely not a networking programming guru, but there is a trend not to kind of mix in, in, in one game, like two protocols, because there can be a problem if you have TCP sockets open. Uh, that's it's a bit like a, like, a, like a black box. You don't really fully know very probably how the network uh, stack works. Uh, network card there can be some optimization on the quotes where some things happen that you don't want so like that even though you're using UDP let's say on one channel but and TCP uh, on the same channel there could be some interference with that um, but we will come to that so what we will concentrate on today is is UDP 
and yeah what it will try to achieve is to write a server i mean i'm writing it under quotes because that will really just be the the beginning of a server really the, the first baby steps um, and there are certain different approaches that you can take to to, to write such a server um, what we will do is we write it as a thing as a separate process for now we might do other variants as well another variant would be so or like okay what well, this is what, what do i mean with a separate process so what we have um or what you've done yesterday on day one is that we have we have programmed the the, the game client uh, which is in our case because it runs on windows it was an exe file it was called game.exe and um yeah, that's running as a separate process and that will be our game client. <clears throat> um, what we could do is essentially we could write code in a way that this one thing could serve as a client or as a server or essentially as both, uh, which we then refer to as a, as a listen server. So you could start it up in a way, and there's a lot of games, like, like I think all the, all the games with the Unreal Engine, they essentially can be started with parameters like okay I, i'm a i'm a client i'm a standalone client I, i'm working as a as a server only or i'm a client and a server in in one package so to say um but as you can imagine in my in my mind um this one is the this one's the most complicated to do <laughs> um if you have a clean separation um networking is always hard to be honest with you but um, for me, it's it's easy, and, and I think we will start together now with a separate server process, separate code base. Um, I, I really think that's easier to, to handle as, as beginners. And I think in network programming, almost everyone in the world is a beginner, to be honest. Um, so if someone from Wales or so is, is looking here, is watching here, which I don't think, uh, maybe, maybe you're a pro. Um, but, um, well, network programming is really quite hard and, and, uh, yeah, you will see me struggle for sure. <laughs> and, uh, let's, let's try it as, as, as easy as possible. Okay. Let's quickly, uh, think what, uh, I could explain next before jumping into code. Um, probably nothing at all. There will be several points creeping up. Um, okay. So what you want to do, let's, let's set the goal for today's stream. Um, so what we want to do to be very concrete, we will use the SDL net uh, framework, which is part of, of SDL2. And you have seen and yesterday for text rendering, for example, we already used the SDL TTF library. Um, and today we will use, and you will get to know SDL net in case you don't know it. Um, what I like about SDL.net because we, we don't need to use it. I mean, it's just, just because it's SDL doesn't mean we, we need to use it. We could use anything. I mean, we could write uh, direct Unix sockets. I mean, it's not so easy for us because we're on Windows. Um, we could directly use uh, the WinSocket library to have uh, network traffic going on. Um, we could use that. That's just quite cumbersome and what we want to do is we want to be um, like at least a bit uh, platform neutral let's say um, I think that that's something that's that's quite nice to to have and I might also switch coding between different machines from time to time so and SDLnet does that so it is really platform agnostic and it's quite low level actually it's it's really in my understanding and in my mind it's really just a very thin wrapper uh, above this about these kind of like direct operating system uh, libraries over sockets. Um, and I think it, it hits a sweet spot. So it, we can learn quite a lot from it. It doesn't take a lot of, um, of all the nasty things away from us, which, which is good because we want to learn them. We want to see them. On the other hand, it, um, it helps us quite a bit <laughs> with some things that we maybe don't want to deal with. So, so that's what we will do. Um, and yeah, so what I want to, to achieve is to have the server running and let's say it, it 
I mean, it does not accept ex connections. That's what I wanted to write, but essentially that's not the way how UDP works. There is no, not, not such a thing like a connection out of the box, but um, it accepts incoming packages. So this is what we want to achieve. Um, and we will, we will read data from these packages, which is of course something we want to do because the incoming packages then in the future, they will come from our game clients, obviously. And they will very probably contain something like lag like input data, for example. So this will really, uh, we will spend some time with all these things in the next days, weeks, whatever months. Um, the input data is yeah, like which keys were pressed and so on. So this is the kind of data that comes in from the clients. Um, so we want to read that kind of data and then we probably also respond, like, like we answer back. To, to the clients. So this is really what, what, what we want to do. Um, and I would say, let's just jump right into it because it's called live coding and not live drawing. And anyway, I'm always drawing at a 45 degree angle. That's, that's, what, I, <laughs> that's what I see now. Um, I hope you're not sick by, by reading that, that very specific style of, of drawing and writing. Okay, good. Let's let's now jump into it um let's jump into coding before we can start to code we have to download some stuff um i mean i already did it but i will just do it once again so that you really see it from from the start um so where are we now so we will just go to stl.net um And this is the site where you can, uh, can, you can, where you can download this. Um, as yesterday, we need to look into the development libraries and we will use the MINGW um, library. So just download that. I mean, I already did this, I'm not doing it now. I'll just bring you right to where I, where I put it. Just a second. Um, so when you, Download it. This is just a this is just a tar GC file. So you just you just unpack it. I think I don't have to show that to you. I'll show you the end result, so to say. Um, so you know that that folder here. That's the STL uh, MINGW package that I created yesterday. So you see we have the STL base package here. Then we have the TTF, and I just like unpacked the STL2 net. Uh, but that's the newest version. That's 201. That should be the same one as here. Yes. And you saw I I actually. Okay, that's yeah. That's not that's not the date when I when I downloaded it. Um, and there we see the familiar structure. So we are in 64-bit world. So we have again the the binaries with the DLL runtimes, the runtime DLL. Sorry. Um, we have all the include stuff, which is yeah nothing really special. There is just one file, and we have the the libraries themselves. Okay, um, so the first thing we need to do is to prepare some stuff to actually, um, yeah, run run our separate server process. Okay, so to do that, let's just move that out of the way. Um, and let's move that out of the way as well. Um, so we are here, let's see if that works. So you see, we are here in our wonderful MMO game project. And if you have a look at the contents, you see that we have uh, some, some good stuff. Yeah, by the way, I, I checked in the code. So in case you did not see that, um, this is where you can find the code if you're interested. Um, and I'm also linking all the videos. So it's just in the github.com Mata, M-A-T-E-U-N, uh, MMO from scratch. So there you see all the, all the code. I will just like after each stream, I will update the latest version that we, that we built together. Um, 
and you will find it here. So for example, so that's that's just the state we, we had uh, yesterday. And that's a store and that's a, that's the that's the game client essentially in all its glory. That's what you can see here. Okay. Good. So let's let's go back. Um, so what do we have here? So we have this uh, this build folder where the executable goes in, and then we also have the the build.bat file. Uh, let's have a look at that, um, or let's actually um, copy and adapt it. Um, so what I would like to do is boom, 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 um, to actually uh, have a separate build uh, build file for for the server. Um, as I said before, we could mix that all down into one file, to one source code, also into one build file. I, I don't want to do that now. That's, it's just much easier to have it uh, separate. Um, so let's go there and let's just copy the build.bat file to build server.bat. Um, and now we will just work on that. Um, and we will just edit it. And yeah, as you have seen, I, what, what I did, I, I tidied it up a bit. Uh, we had this real, real mess of a, of a, of a batch file here. Uh, it was just one, 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 one long line, and we will, and we will obviously change that uh, to something that is much nicer now. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I did, and I, I really looked up. I looked into Google, and I saw okay, with that with that sign here, you can actually tell the Windows batch file to to go to another line without totally breaking. So that is very nice. But that's what I did. So here we have essentially all the paths for G for our libraries and and for our includes, and there we have the the linkage steps itself. And this is just what what the output is. So we will just now uh, change that to. It's called maybe just the server game, because essentially it is the game that is running on the server. It is the game. It is like the one and only the authoritative game. So we will call it the server game. Um, what we need to do is we will also link to to STL2 and also to this STL2 main, um, but we will not link to STL2 TTF. And uh, that doesn't make sense on the server. We will not render something directly, uh, and also not indirectly. We will not render at all. We just don't need that. We will just link to stl.net. And uh, well, why is that? Why do I know that? I can show you. Uh, this is just the library here. And this is just uh, this name here, libstl2 underscore net dot a, a for archive. Uh, that's a static library, or that's a that's an import library technically, but uh, I don't want to go into detail for that. And the syntax is, I didn't explain that in case you don't know. So you just say minus L for link to a specific library, then the lib you always, you just ignore, then you give that name and then without the, the suffix. That's how it works. And, oh, that, that's how we hope that it works. <laughs> um, okay, and now we need to also adapt the the, the the folder names for the include and for the library files. Um, so the include path is actually um, this one here. So it's ta -ta -ta -tum. yeah. I mean, let's just make it make it completely. So let's say this is the include path. So that's a capital I and a D. And then, you know, we need to change this. We need to change this to nice slashes. That's just the problem with Windows. And, oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, well, that's, that's how it works. That's a complicated character there. Um, the TTF stuff we don't need actually, can get rid of that. And then we need to um, have the library path as well. That will be just this thing here, essentially. 
and again we just have to we have to substitute all the slashes and then We have to tell him, okay, well, the line is not ending here. Okay, so that should actually work now for the first steps. So now we have one file. Okay, that's fine. And now let's let's actually create a new file um, and we will create this in the source directory and we will call it server main.cpp. And yeah, this will this will be the main the main source code file for for the server process, yeah, really. Um, just a second, I'll just look something up. Okay, so what we will need to do is we will need to include some stuff. Um, so we will include the basic SDL stuff and that's SDL do that age. That's just we need that all the time when, when we use something from SDL. That's just that's just a matter of fact. And then we will directly include SDL to SDL underscore net dot age. Okay, so that's that's essentially uh, just this file here. Okay. Um, and then yeah, maybe probably later some other stuff what we also need to do because we really have an executable um in the sdl universe so to say um we need to make a small trick that you already know i mean i will show it to you from the from the client main cpp so as you see we have to we have to we have to make this sort of uh, magic definition here uh, this magic macro so where we just indicate okay we let 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 sdl handle handle the main uh, for itself or something i don't really know what it does i mean i had looked it up once but it's just not not so nice um to do um so we will do that as well so define sdl main handle because otherwise but I will spare you that. Um, it just won't work. I mean, the the program just just won't start. So we will just do the normal stuff. So the number of arguments, the command line arguments themselves as a point to point. And then just just the basic stuff. And it's really just um, try actually to use SDL log this time. I think I didn't use it in the client. Um, but it's it's a good indication that the SDL uh, linkage works actually. And um, yeah, server server game starting up. How about that? Um, the nice thing with SDL log is it it gives you a new line for free. And yeah, <laughs> that's that's something you could do much more. I, there's also some log levels which I don't use now, but um, yeah, you could do that if if you want. Um, so let's see. Um, the build server the bad and there's one more thing that we need to change sorry um let's, let's go here um because what this does it does not compile the main cpp because that would just be the client so what you want to compile is actually the, the server main.cpp <coughs> um and that's that's what we did here now um okay i mean that looks good that, that that should actually work um that will not do anything useful but but let's see if it works so let's fire up the build server dot bat and let's see what what's going on so okay it built so let's see what we have now in the in the build folder uh sorry ah, yeah okay yeah <laughs> we have a lot of stuff um and what is important here we also have the server game so it's quite huge already <laughs> um so that's that's all the overhead that comes with linking to SDL and so on. Um, so let's actually run that and, and see what, what it what it says. And it says okay info. So that's the level that comes because of SDL dot log. Um, server game starting up. So that's what we've written here. Okay. So that's that's good. That's fine. That's that's all we want. Um, so now let's continue to actually fire up 
our real server program. Um, anytime when you when you do something with, SD, with SDL, you need to to initialize it. So we will do that first. Um, so we will do SDL in it, and if you remember, or I can show you, um, if you go to the to the game client. So we also said do the SDL in it, and then we said in which so-called subsystem we we want to initialize here. And and as we are the, the, the game client, uh, it was obviously very important to have some some video to display. So that's why we told him, well, let's start the video subsystem because we will render something essentially. Here on the server, we will not render anything. We will also not output any audio. Um, and we will actually just really use the base functionality of SDL itself. So that's why we just pass a zero here. Um, and if there's an error, there will be a negative error number. And if that happens, as, as yesterday, we will just say error initializing uh, SDL. And I will just call SDL get error. And I will essentially just bail out with a non zero code. And yeah, as yesterday, let's again do the baby steps. So we will just compile, see if everything still works. And so, I mean, now we don't really see if, <laughs> if we bailed out with a zero or not. Um, so let's actually just add a Add a kind of a success message which says, okay, um, all good. Server closing down because that's that's what it does now. But let's say, um, what do you say? Regularly, regularly. Okay. So that's the that's the indication that everything is good, and we will fill this up with some code in between. You know we have the freestyle one 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 file <laughs> fits all style. Um, so we'll fill this up, and each time when we see this uh, this message, okay, we will know that actually we're good. I mean, the, the the thing that we've written that that executed in the normal way, let's say, we did not bail out uh, early. Okay, let's try that out. Sorry, that was the wrong thing. And so this is what you want to see in the future. All good server closing down regularly. Okay, so I assume we have now uh, initialized SDL itself. And now what, what we need to do, we need to initialize the SDL net subsystem, obviously, because we want to use that. Um, so I hope you can see that. I will move it here so that we don't. Uh, we are not obscured by the, by the chat. That's very important. Okay, so. What to do? I mean, these all these SDL documentations they look very similar. Um, I I actually quite like them, and that's especially very nice. That's the the person who, who is Jonathan Atkins who wrote that library. I mean, he wrote some nice nice stuff here. There is even a small poem. I don't know I don't know if it's from him, but it's it's very nice actually. You you should read it. It's it's definitely worth it. And yeah, so what we've already seen, it's the includes, they are here. The compilation we didn't have to do, we just downloaded the binary right away. And what you want to do is to go to the to the to the to the startup function <laughs> functions, uh, sorry. And that's a SDL net in it. And um, let's just do it a bit like this. Um, that was not what I intended. Okay. Um, so let's say SDL net init is smaller than zero. Then again, we will just bail out error initializing SDL net. And now there is a, I think it's SDL net, yeah, get error. So that can be interesting if, if something goes wrong, um, you would see a more or less useful error message. Sometimes it's not really useful, but sometimes <laughs> it can be a lifesaver. Um, so let's just quickly try it out and let's see if that still runs. 
So looks good. So it seems that also the initialization of STLnet uh, did work. Um, so there is also an STLnet quit. Um, I mean, let's let's actually do that. Um, yeah, there is. I have my opinion on 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 on, on quitting resources when the, when the whole process shuts down anyway, which sometimes can lead to performance issues. Um, and sometimes I tend to not do that, and sometimes I'm just lazy, and sometimes I just forget. But um, yeah, let's just do that for now because it's already standing here. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is to to open up a socket. Um, so you might notice, but uh, the way how these uh, how this network programming actually works is by by using sockets. So you have essentially one socket per process, which uh, kind of symbolizes, yeah, a yeah. Let's say it, it's your it's your gateway to the to the network cable, so to say, um, or to the wireless connection. So you you write to that socket to send some information to somewhere else, and you read from that socket to to uh, to yeah to retrieve some information it it works a bit like or very very much actually like a, like a file like a file handle so you just tell the operating system okay i want this kind of very specific file which which happens to to be connected to the network in the background so what we need here is a is a udp socket um because we want to work with udp for now so you see there is a lot of things that that you can do there is name resolution stuff um, IP to DNS and, and the other way around and so on. Um, and now we get to TCP sockets, so we might use that later, but not today, not now. And uh, a little bit down there, there is the UDP socket stuff. So what you want to do is uh, to make this open up a port. And we will call that, um, so this is a UDP socket. And let's just see. Um, just give me a second. Yeah, okay, that's actually, that's not a pointer type. Okay, that's fine. Let's call this the service socket and let's just create it, open. And what you give here, this is the port number. And um, this is essentially like, like a unique number of an application that, that does network uh, traffic, so to say. Um, maybe we will fire that up a bit. Um, so what you have here is like, just very shortly. Um, so let's say, so if there would not be port number, there would be certain problems because let's say um, we would just have computer one and computer two. And let's say there is a program that that is waiting for UDP packets, and there is one one that that sends them, um, and it has an IP address. I don't know. Let's say it's ten zero one two, and that's I don't know eighty ten five five whatever. Um, if that would be the only the only encoding options that we have, then we could say, well, send a packet and then and, and send it to the address. 10, 0, 1, 2, and the payload is, I don't know, hello. So that's five bytes. Um, and just send it to there. Um, okay, that would be fine if there's just one program listening, but if there is another program listening, which does maybe a completely different thing, and it just uh, gets something from computer number 999, that's, that's might be a web server or whatever, then okay, then how can that work? I mean, that's just one one IP address. So how how would the how would the network card essentially and the control of the network card know where to actually pass to which program pass pass the data? And that's where the ports come in. And then the ports are just like like number plates for the for the programs. And let's say this has the port I don't know six six six, and let's say this has the port I don't know seven thousand. Then you would actually just add this and say, well, this is the IP and the number plate, the port is 666. So this is then a very specific program on that computer. And then a network card, which lists to all the packages that knows, okay, this, this packet goes here and this packet goes there and so on. Okay, so this is just the port that we will now uh, define here. So we are 
literally deciding which which port we use. I mean, it in theory and also in practice, of course, it's necessary. That this port is is not in use already. Um, it should not be. Let's let's try out the 666. Uh, I played around before with that port. Let's see if it's if it's really not in use. I mean, it should not be. Um, so we just say we have now we open up a service socket that is listening on this port here. Okay. Um, and so let's see if if that fails. So if we don't have a service socket, um, so if that's zero essentially. Again, you know the drill. We will just say, well, error setting up our sockets. And we will ask SDL what went actually wrong. Let's hope there is nothing that goes wrong. But in case, well, we know what to do. Okay. So let's. Sorry. Build it. Okay, there is something wrong. Um, he doesn't know server sockets. <sighs> tip, tip, tip. What is wrong? Yeah, I think I know what is wrong because UDP socket has has a small L, and that's I think what the problem was. Um, yep, STL net open does not exist because it's called STL not UDP open because. There is also an SDL TCP open. Okay. It's building. Let's see if it's working. And yeah, so it seems that's that's okay. And let's also just kind of right away close the socket down just to be nice citizens. Um, UDP close and we just give it our service sockets. And let's just quickly try that out so we know that it works. And then we can continue. Okay, so that's all looking quite healthy still. So the next thing we want to do is we want to receive a packet. Uh, we want to receive some information. Um, that's that's what we're for. That's that's what, what we are. That's what our purpose as the server is. Um, so let's receive a packet. And the way um, SDL works uh, on, on how to receive a packet is that you really first set up the, a packet structure um, and then you and then you tell SDL, okay, look, this, this is the packet that I've prepared. Uh, there is this amount of space available to, to actually receive data. And so now please look really go to the network card, go to the socket and, and just uh, see if there is any data. And if there is any data, just please fill it into my into my packet. Um, so to create a packet, let's see. There is a certain command which is called stlnet alloc packet. So allocate a specific packet. Um, and that's, so let's do that now. And this is actually a pointer to a UDP packet. And um, let's call this the, the packet in, because that's, that will be, we will use that as the, as the incoming packet. Um, and this says stlnet allocate the packet. And yeah, let's, let's just give it a size of 1024. Uh, that's the number in bytes. Um, there is a certain limit um, in, in, in UDP packets. I don't, or I will not go into detail now, but uh, UDP packets can be very small, actually. I think the official maximum size is around 250 bytes. That's like the, the guaranteed size that a UDP packet has, like on, on every hardware on the planet. It can be bigger, it very often is nowadays, but um, yeah, I mean, let's just stick with 1024. Normally that should work. And uh, I mean, if it doesn't work, we will we will see it anyway, and then we will try to find a workaround. Um, so, then we will again check if if that packet is somehow not created. Um, and that's a reason for us now to just go out. Error creating packets. And let's see what, what has gone wrong. And let's just jump out. 
And again, I mean, I can really emphasize this. Maybe it's it's a bit boring that I always compile, and you see that we, we have a problem already um, because I misspelled it. Um, but it's really just much easier. For example, now, if, if I would just go on and, and, and continue coding and I have maybe two or three more errors, like, like small errors, um, but it's kind of demoralizing. If you then do, like five minutes later, if you then do compile, you suddenly have, I don't know, three, four, five errors, and you think, oh my God, I, I broke everything. And yeah, normally if you just wrote one, two, three, four lines, and then you compile, well, there cannot be so much broken normally. And when there's an error, you find it very quickly normally, just like this one here. Um, and all is still good. We're still going through the code in, in, in one healthy go. Okay, so we have a packet that we can, that we can actually use. And, um, so what is uh, what we're doing now is uh, to to really listen uh, for data, and uh, there is a specific function to do that, and it's called something with receive. It's a bit of a strange name. <coughs> um, here we have it, I think. Yeah. So this is receive a packet on a specified socket. Um, so it and it returns a one when a packet is received and then it's a zero when there is no packet received and minus one when, when there are certain errors. Um, so what we will prepare is probably, because we might be interested in, in, in that, um, uh, the number of received. Um, I mean, it's not a real number of received packets, I think. It's really just indicating with a one that there is a packet, but whatever. Um, let's call it maybe receive. Okay, I think that's that's actually more like like what it is. Um, and so how this works now is you just say that receive. Okay, or or I mean let's 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 just do it now. Uh, receive okay equals this stlnet UDP receive. That's just, they just spared some, some letters there. It's because letters are very expensive, it seems. Um, and what it expects from us is uh, quite easy. That's just our socket. So that's a server socket that we created before. And then it expects uh, the address of a, of a packet. And uh, we have that, that's our packet in. That's already a pointer type. So that's a bit different than what they do here. I mean, here it's, it's, I mean, I don't know how they do it because that's that's actually an empty packet. But however, um, I think that's that's that would not work uh, as it is written here. So we have a we have a pointer here. We can just give that right away, and yeah. And then so if num receive or if in our case it's receive, okay. So if that is not zero, essentially, um, let's just cheer out and say, well, we received something. Um, or let's say the game server received a packet and that's it. Um, so let's compile it. Let's just compile it. Okay, that was going through and let's actually run it and we will see what, what is happening is, I mean, it's good, it, it runs through there's one important thing, I mean, but that, that's not a useful property now for a server, let's say, because a server we expect it to be like, like always on, hopefully, and like, like running for a long time, probably, uh, especially if it's an MMO server. Uh, it's not just there for a small match or something. Uh, it maybe is on for, I don't know, half a year <laughs> or two years or whatever. Um, but that does not work, uh, obviously. And there is one, one important thing that, that they are right here. Um, so this is the important part here. So this is a so-called non-blocking call. So when you say sdl.net, whoops, UDP receive, that that will do the following. It will really just check: is there something waiting on that specific socket? Is there a new UDP packet coming in? And if not, like almost immediately, um, it will just just go back. So this will be 
so this will be zero, receive okay will be zero. As this is zero, we will not get into that if branch and we will just, yeah, just continue as, as normal. So what we want to do is we want to essentially go into something like an endless loop and we will just do that for now. We will do that much more clever, let's say, uh, in, in the future, because that, that is really like an endless loop that can kind of not, not, be, not be stopped. Um, but we will, yeah, change that eventually. And yeah, so this is now much better um, in terms of that the server will just won't 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 close down after just trying it once. So what we will do now is we will actually just write a small message that we will say, okay, um, the server game is waiting for packets. So that's the state that it is in, in that point in time, because then it will always loop. It will always go, um, sorry, but this has to get into the, into the loop, <laughs> sorry. Um, so it will enter the loop, see is there something on the network? If it is, okay, in that case, for now, we will just announce that we have, we have got something. We don't even write what we got because yeah, we have to find that out. And if not, we will just look, look it up again. Um, so that's really what we call a busy loop. So that's really not the most efficient way to do it. Um, that will really kind of slow down the, the, the computer a bit um that, that's really there is not even a there's not even a sleep or something in it uh, let's just do it now uh, for for simplicity's sake um but we will improve that later so let's see how that how that looks like now so now that looks a bit different so now what we have is okay the server game is starting up that's, that's this line here and then we do all the all the initialization nothing goes wrong we, we never get into any of the error conditions here and then we we are finally here that's the last thing that that, that we see here and then we're entering into that endless loop and uh, you might not hear it but i already hear my my computer <laughs> heating up because it's not really being in that endless loop and always checking 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 and so i would say let's give him something to 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 receive actually um, and for this, I use a program which is called the Packet Sender. This is just uh, a helper tool, which is quite cool. I mean, it's it's for free. Um, let's see where you can get that. Um, I I downloaded that some some time ago. Packet Sender Windows. Let's see if that's the right thing. I think it is. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I recognize the, the logo. Um, so, of course, you, you it's, it's not mandatory to use that, but it's just really practical. I mean, it's like, uh, it's a nice little program um, that essentially allows you to send data via UDP or TCP. And um, so what you do is you write the data that you want to send either in S in uh, ASCII code. So that's just essentially you can write whatever you want. Hi there. And then it will just encode it in, in, in ASCII bytes in, in hex code. Um, you can also directly write, write hexadecimal numbers there if you like. And then you give the IP address and the port of the server to, with which you want to communicate. So that would be the local host address because we are running on the same host here now. So that is um, 127.0.0.1. Uh, be aware to write it like this because local host does not work for whatever reason. Um, I mean, it says IP address, so that might be the reason, but um, yeah, that it works. And this is the port and the port has to be the number that we have given here. Okay. This is, uh, this is important. Otherwise uh, things won't work. And another, caveat is that here it must say UDP because if it's TCP it also won't work obviously because we are listening on UDP and that's that's just a different 
a different protocol, it's a different thing. Okay, so when that is set up, let's move that out of the way. Let's try to send something. And yeah, okay, that's cool. So what we see here, here in the bottom, we see that this is like the the protocol, the log of, of what we sent from that packet sender client to our server. Yeah, so like we sent with UDP to that server, to that port, to that IP, uh, this this data. Yeah, that that's actually the payload. That's the data that we sent. That's hello. That's these five bytes here. Okay, and what we see here that we jumped like almost immediately because we are on the local host. So that's that's quite quick. We don't really go over the the physical network, obviously. Um, it received something. So that was a one and we, we got into that. I mean, let's try that out once more. And you see that that's how these things work. Yeah. So each time when we send something, we receive it. So you can think of that packet sender as being a substitution for um, being a substitution for for our game client, essentially. Um, this is really like, you can really, before you do some programming on the game client, you can already test your server by sending specific messages to him. You could, for example, uh, already send some, um, some input messages and so on and so on. So that that's really nice. And that's probably we will spend some time with, with, with that, uh, actually. We will uh, play around with that packet sender quite a lot, or I will do it. Um, so, okay, let's let's move on now. Let's move to an important topic. Um, we now know, okay, that we, we got some, some information. We got some information from a client. I mean, like, it's not useful. It's not useful uh, as it is now because we don't even know what we got. So we have to look what how can we actually get get data out of of the packet that we that we received here. Um, and this this is done by by inspecting the packet. So the packet has a very specific structure. So the pack the packet sorry the packet is a struct. It is a C struct essentially, and it has some members and the members are all very important. Um, so we have the channel here, which we will ignore for now. Just, we just forget it for now. <laughs> um, that would just confuse us. Um, but what is important, so, so here we have the packet data. So what is that? It's a UINTA. So that's, that means that's an, actually that's an unsigned byte. Yeah, so that's an integer with eight bits. That's, that's the smallest unit we have and that's a pointer to it. <clears throat> So that's a pointer to our local memory where the data that the other computer send us is, is stored. Okay. Um, as this is a pointer and this is some, some amount of data, we don't really know how, how much data it is. We, we need some additional information. So we need this length information here. And this length information tells us, okay, this is, this is how much data is actually in that in that current package. Okay, um, this is just the uh, the maximum size of our data buffer. I mean, we we set it to 1,024, so we already know that. Um, the packet status after sending. Let's see what that is. Okay, that's just interesting when you send something out. Um, so not interesting for us now. And yeah, as it says, this is useless for receive packet and. <clears throat> And this is also quite interesting. So this is the address of the other side. So this is the address of the computer that actually send us the packet. And that's of course important for us to know. So if we are an MMO server, we need to know from which client we got which information. That's, that's very important. Uh, it definitely makes a difference if we get input from player one or player two. Um, <clears throat> so we need to somehow do a mapping of the internet addresses of a specific player to <clears throat> to which player it is in our game okay that's something that we will come to when we have the whole process of players like logging in and um, like entering our our game uh, essentially um, 
So, but this is from where the packet came from. Okay, and I, I would suggest we'll just like examine what what, what we what we got here, and uh, we will just print that out so we so we so we get a better feeling of of how of how the data looks like. Um, let's start with the data, and the data is <clears throat> let's call it the data in, and that's. And that's the member of pack it in and that's called data yeah and that's it and let's just log that out right away oh no let's let's also see the length and that's the packet in length so and let's see the data received so that's an unsigned uh, byte and let's say the length, and that's just a normal integer. So let's say we are interested in data in, and um, as you know, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a pointer to, to some piece of data. So how that works, that's essentially, you, you can access it with, uh, with an array notation. So you can say, well, wherever that data in, so that's, that's actually a pointer to the first element of that array. So where that points in, so just give me that, that first element. Whatever comes, <clears throat> I want to see that um, for now. <laughs> and then we say, well, this is this is the length. Okay, so let's let's try that out. Let's see what what has changed. <coughs> okay, we're waiting for some incoming stuff, and we're sending we're sending stuff. Uh, we're sending hello essentially. So let's let's clear that out and. Okay, now that's interesting. So what 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 did we receive? Um, so we received um, uh, a strange number, <laughs> or not so strange. We'll come to that. Um, so that's one hundred four, and um, and that's that's five. So the length is five. That makes sense because that's one, two, three, four, five five bytes here that's five uh five digits here okay that's that's the length and uh, 104 so what is 104 and that should be essentially the the st code of of the age um but let's let's look that up in case you don't believe me or i don't believe myself <laughs> sc st code um chup, chup, chup. let's see if we find something that is actually nice so we have 104 and yeah so here we go 104 sorry 104 that's that's the age okay and let's actually just try another test let's just see uh if that works so if we see if we say we want to see the oops the next element in that in that data that that's an A. That's an E. Sorry. So that should be one one o one now. Okay. So let's let's recompile and let's resend the same thing. And yeah, so that's one o one. So that's that's the American standard code for for the E. Okay. So this is essentially how you. How you receive data? Um, that's that's literally all all to it. And um, yeah, in a way, that's that's already kind of the basis of of the whole whole networking story. Um, there's a lot of details, and I will also come to like like the order of the bytes. I mean, there is more than one byte sent essentially, um, and all these things. And there's really a lot of details now. But when you have understood this. Well, I mean that's that's really the basic of of everything, and that, that's I mean it's very primitive. It's like that's that that's all. So, um, now that's really the the basic of every of every network game. It's really, I mean, really this is it. This this piece of data here. I mean, when you write the network game, this is really where where the magic is happening this is where you decide what goes in as data um, how efficient that might be or not 
um, this is how you encode, for example, your inputs. So we will come to that later, but just as a first um, like appetizer. So there is, of course, a lot of options that you have here. Let's, let's make a small detour maybe now. Um, so when you send, because that's essentially all you have. I mean, you have these, you have this array. You have this array of bytes and only to a certain degree you can actually decide how, how, how big this is because what I told you, a, a UDP packet, so it's it's not completely clear to me at least uh, how big the size is, but there is, it is something between 200, uh, 250 and I think 1,500 bytes, um, something along that line. But it's also not, not so much. And if you really want to be on the safe side and you say, well, that's 250 of these bytes here, well, I mean, you know, it's it's 250 bytes. I mean, that's that that's not so much. So let's say, for example, that you want to uh, encode some 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 input, and you and let's say you want to do it in a in a like in a very naive way, and you say, well, okay, I what I want to send over the network is essentially like 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 let's say you have an up key, you have a down key, and you have a left key, and you have a right key. Um, so then you have several possibilities. Let's say the, the worst possibility would really be like to, to to really literally send those words. I mean, but it, but it works. But let, let's say um, that in a certain point in time, you want to send several commands that, that that the player did, several input commands the player did. Let's say in the last I don't know twenty five milliseconds or, or whatever. Okay. Um, and let's say it sent up, left, and right. Okay, now that's 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 what the player did, and that's what you want to send to the server. And then you really have uh, a lot of possibilities. And I just want to scratch the surface, but just to give you an idea, and maybe to give you some food to think through uh, how you could do that and play around for yourself as well, of course. Um, okay, so and then you have this packet, and let's say it is 250 bytes long. And you say, well, I have all these bytes and, and I know that one of these letters is actually one byte, so I will just fill it up like this. I will just write, okay, that that's up. And then I will just write left. And yeah, so I, I could do it that way. And I could do, I don't know, I would spend one, five, 10, like, like 11 or 12 bytes right? with that. And I say, well, I still have 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 a lot a lot of other bytes left and then and you could definitely do that um, why not and then the server would just read that in and say okay well if if I read a string that that is up so if there is a byte sequence of, of u and p then I know okay that player is uh, has moved up but then for example okay which which player was it I mean okay either there is a you know that already from the from the from the header. Or maybe you have to encode it somewhere else and let's say the player has a number and let's say the number is eight, seven, six, four. And then you might also choose to, at the end, you want to choose that. But there you see, and this is just to give you an idea that as more and more information you want to go, you want to give to the server, um, well, that fills up pretty quickly. And uh, so let's imagine that uh, it, the player didn't only move, but it also shot a weapon. And it shot weapon one, let's say, and it shot, I don't know, in a specific direction, like there is an X and a Y and a C coordinate and so on. And I will not do this now, but you get the idea that you have to somehow encode, okay, there was a fire event, let's say, that was weapon one and so on. Um, so if you do that in that, let's say, naive way where you encode everything in a, in a byte, then, well, you might run out of space quite quickly. And so there is different ways how you can do that. So you can, for example, use just that first byte here. Because the nice thing is that a byte actually consists of eight bits. Okay, that's more than eight now. Let's say that's two bytes, <laughs> whatever. Then there is ways that you can treat actually each each bit separately. And you, for example, you could just say, I say this is the up key, this is the down key, this is the left key, and this is the right key. These four bits, and when they are zero, that will just mean they are not pressed. And if one of them, and if they are one. And that that means they are pressed. So to have the same thing, that would be that would be one, that would be zero, and I think that would be also a one. 
So that's half a byte. The same information, if you know how to pull it out, we'll come to that. It's the same information as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, 12 bytes. That's half a byte. It's 4 bits instead of 12 bytes. Uh, that's like 48 bits. And as I said, each bit really is very important in in networking. It's it's really it's really important to save bits. Uh, I can tell you, <laughs> um, your your players will will really thank you for that. Okay, so let's let's jump back into the code. So and let's oh, sorry, where's the code? Here's the code. <laughs> okay, good. So what we have now is a server that is listening for stuff, and it is actually receiving it. So what we next next thing we want to do is we want to actually kind of answer back potentially because it doesn't make sense if if the server is not communicating something back to the clients. Um, <clears throat> that is just useless. So let's do that. How so? How do we know? how to how to communicate back uh, there is well, first of all let's let's see how, how could we send actually some data how how, how would you do that um, and that should be written somewhere here let's just see look for send 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 so yeah that's what we want to do so there is a function called STL net UDP send and that's that's what is used here. And um, let's see how far we come. Let's see what we need to what we need to do. Let's just say that here in at that point in time, okay, we know we received a message from a given client, and we actually grab the data so we can we can process it potentially. So, oops. <laughs> let's say that in a real implementation we would not do something with the data so we would really interpret and process it so we would like align it to the respective client and update update the world the game model itself yeah so we'll, we'll come to that i i don't know please please let me know in the chat if that if that makes sense so when i speak of the world and the game model if, if you know what i'm talking about so um um i, I just assume you do <laughs> otherwise please shout out um so it would update the game model like uh eg move player one i don't know two meters in the game world to the to the right in global coordinates okay um, and then we would send an update to all the connected clients that's the naive way how we would do that um, Hi Gregor, that really you? <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that really you? That the, the Gregor I know. Okay, that that's really cool. Um, just say yes or no, or write a byte pattern, a bit pattern, <laughs> if that's really you. Um, <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, good. Um, <clears throat> So then we would send an update to all the connected clients. So that, that's what we would do. So now we don't do that, uh, of course, because that's just um, way too much work now. Um, we just want to go now the, the easy road um, and we just want to send anything back so that we see that it basically works. And then we will just refine on that. Um, so what do we do now we say okay so we have this command here it's sdl nets uh, udp send so let's just try to to do that sdl nets udp send um okay we first need the the socket i mean that's easy that's our server socket that's we, we use to to send it then we have the channel and this we just ignore as i as i told you ignore the channel um that's 
that's a bit of a special thing that the SDL does here, which uh, I just completely ignore for now. Maybe we will use it at a later time. Um, good. Um, and then there is a packet. Again, there is a packet. So um, what we want to do to be very clean is that we want to have a separate packet from the <clears throat> for the incoming stuff and for the outgoing stuff. Um, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you could probably just reuse the packet in and, and just or like almost reuse everything, just overwrite the data or something. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that could even work. That might even be rather... Um, it might even be rather efficient, but don't know. <laughs> I'm really just thinking of it. I never did it, but I think that that should actually work. Um, but let's just not do that and let's just prepare a specific, uh, whoops, outgoing packet. Um, let's let's prepare a packet for our outgoing stuff. Uh, let's call it information. That's much that's much nicer. Um, so we already know how to do that. Um, let's let's call it a packet out, and we will just allocate it. And let's make that rather small for now, um, just to see that that it this is possible. Um, I will now skip the check if the packet is valid. Um, yeah, I'm just too lazy now. <laughs> uh, we could do it. Probably we should do it, uh, but. We're still in the in the freestyle mode, so yeah, we just skip that now. Just assume it's it, it's there, um, and so this packet out. This is what what we will use here already. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a point to packet. That's exactly what we have. I'm sorry. Let's pack it out. Um, and so we just have to fill it with information. And let's just go back to the UDP packet once more. So what is the struct? What does this look like? So the UDP packet again, it has the channel, which we completely ignore. And it has the data. So now the data is interesting. Um, there are several ways now to fill in data. Let's let's start with the most easy one, um, the most raw one. So we have that unsigned integer buffer, <clears throat> um, and let's just call it the data out, and let's just say that that's an array with, with ten bytes. Okay, and then we could just go there and stuff data into into that array, um, and we could just say in the first position, I don't know, whatever, we we just put the hex hex value zero one and, and um, in the second position we put the hex value, I don't know, whatever. So this is really just a protocol that that, that, that we invent. So we that, that's what I showed you before. I mean that's really like this is where our creativity comes in. This is like how much we can actually stuff into into our packets. So let's assume there's really not a lot of space. Then what you want is really you want to compress as good as you can, and you want to really st stuff as much things as you can into one into one byte essentially. And um, yeah, really use each bit uh, as you can. So that's that's true in all directions because if you remember, if you are a server, and especially if you are a MMO server, and you are in the middle. Um, no, where did we have it? Okay, so you are the server, and there is literally hundreds of thousands of clients. Well, it really, it really counts um, which which information you send out and how many bytes and bits you use. Okay, so going back here, um, so what you do here? So this is just a local variable here. So mean, I mean, this is just really living on the stack. So we just say, well, this is just ten bytes that we will use as, as the outgoing data, and then we just stuff something in there. And um, yeah, let's just let's just do that. Um, and let's see 
what comes out and I mean of course there is one thing missing now so what this this packet here and as we have seen this packet here uh, and what it says when you go back to the to the sending stuff this is the LAN. I mean, I will not show it to you, but I know this is the length of the packet data. That's very, that's very important for the for the hardware to know how many how many bytes to send out. So this is what we what we need to give. So so for the packet out, let's prepare now actually that packet. So that packet out now. So that that gets data, and the data is our data out. Okay, we just let it point to our data out uh, array then the next thing we need to tell him okay how how long is the data actually yeah, we could say now 10 then we will send all the 10 bytes let's just do that for now so there might be garbage at, at position two three or whatever because we did not initialize the memory in any way or something but um we can leave it like that for now because we will just see how how it comes how it comes out at the other end of the line um the max land i think that's not really important but let's let's fill it out i mean that's 10 as well um the status yeah okay we can read that out afterwards but what is important that is the that is the address um and the address is actually So what is that now? So what is the address? The address is the IP address of the... So what you want to put here is the destination. So that's actually the client, the one that sent us the packet that came in. And there is a shortcut that we can use now, and why not? Let's just do that. We can just use the address from the packet that came in. So that's the packet in. And we will just grab that and use that as the address for the outgoing packet. Okay. Um, so you might be interested in seeing what is in that address, what is the host name, what is the port number, and so on. We, and we might might look into that, or maybe you just might tell me if you're interested in that, um, because that's some byte and bit shuffling. So that might actually be interesting to see, or boring. It depends on the on the point of view. But that should actually work. So we can just use that. I I think so. That should probably work. Let's see. Um, so let's stop this here. Let's compile. Okay, it compiled. That's good. Um, let's run the stuff. So it's waiting for packages, and let's see if there is now something new happening. A voila! And what we see here is again. Okay, we receive still the age, and we receive a length of five. So we have received a hello string. That's fine. So that's that's what we sent here from that packet sender. And now what is interesting that we got something back. So this is from that server, from our game server, we got back uh, this information here. Uh, we got back at the first byte, we got a zero one. Now that's exactly what we have stuffed into the data. In the second byte, there is, there is the, uh, the FF uh, hexadecimal value, so that's exactly there. Then there just happens to be some zeros, and then you see at the sixth or seventh position, uh, there is an eight. Um, and there you see why it is important. It's because that eight, I mean, it does not come from, from us directly. I mean, this eight is just somewhere in memory. Um, and this is, this is a good example of uninitialized memory, actually. This is just, um, here we just said, okay, I want to just to have 10 bytes in a row. And yeah, but we really don't know know what it is. So what we could do is, for example, I mean, there is actually, I think, a zero memory command, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's data out and you just tell it, I think it's 10. Let's see if that works. So that's, I think that's some specific stuff. Let's, let's just do it kind of by hand. <laughs> okay. Oops. So that is probably important to say, well, <clears throat> um, to just really say, well, I want to be sure what is in there. It's really, um, it's always a, a given value. And normally that's, that's just zero. Well, that should work now. We should not have these, 
is ugly eights here or something. And so you see, so that's that's the last thing. And now we just have the bytes that we stuffed into it. Okay, so that's zero, one, and FF, and, and all the rest is zero, and these zeros are all coming from, from our side. And that's very important because you might <coughs> write actually very similar code because that's that's really like, like just like a mirror. Like on the client, what is happening is it's exactly the same thing. I mean, we will not write it today. There's not so much time left for me, um, but this is like exactly the same. I mean, the client is also sitting in its game loop. And let's just go to the client. I think it's here. So that's just a mess, sorry. But <laughs> um, let's say this is this is our game loop. Um, so what it will do, and we will come to that, um, is checking the local inputs. And, and at some point in time, also checking input from the server. So what, how does it do that? Well, it is listening to a, or to its UDP socket. I mean, it doesn't have one now, but uh, we will create one. And it's listening to its UDP socket. And then it's really just the same thing. It is reading, reading in the information, interpreting it, applying it, to its own model on this specific client. So I'm writing that very verbosely, but maybe it's useful so that when you, if you download the code from GitHub, then you actually kind of get this kind of <laughs> documentation also with it. Um, applying the model on this specific client. Um, and yeah, just, and then, finally rendering out the stuff. So what it would do is really just also do that receive stuff, um, packet, pull out the data. Um, I will not just do it now, but this is what it will do. And then just, I don't know, check something, if data, whatever, equals whatever, like it is a position. So I'm just jumping a, a bit ahead now. So we will we will end the stream probably in around uh, five minutes or so. But I will just give you like a like a bit of a heads up that what we will do in the next next couple of of days. Like if we know that this is a that this is a position update, um, then we will just um, apply apply the new position either right away. But before we might check. Or, or check if the new position is, let's say, close enough to make an immediate update. If it's too big, if it's too far away, that might look, I don't know, choppy. And we might need to interpolate and so on and so on so that's just a kind of small yeah let's call it a teaser of, of, of what's to come and then you can really go like super crazy with all these all these things uh, like if you are a real professional game like something written with the unreal engine or written by wave or something um like counter strike or something like this i mean this is where the things are really sophisticated. And this is where things are really very, very interesting. But this is where things really tend to get pretty complicated um, and a bit, a bit nasty, to be honest. Um, and it just gets more complicated when you have an MMO instead of a game like where you have a fixed number of players on a map. Well, let's say you know that you have a small game with I don't know, five players per per team. And this, let's say it's only three teams max. Okay, then you know it's only 15 players. Then you can do a lot of a lot of uh, optimizations in a, in a very specific way because then you because then you can know, for example, and then and I will just kind of end the stream with with these thoughts for for the next things to come, like because then you can really do some very specific things. Okay, I'm zooming in. Um, like when you know that I have a maximum of 15 players, 
and I kind of know what, what is the kind of information that my server can send me, um, I can really make very good use uh, of, of the bytes that I have available. On the other hand, what is our task here? When we are speaking like 15 players in a, in a map, and a map is just the thing that the client will actually render, or at least part of it. If you have just 15 players in a map, well, that, that's, that's quite, you can really optimize that. But if you have an MMO where you have between, I don't know, let's say zero or, or one players and up to, I mean, I don't know, it's, let's say several hundreds on, on, on one machine on, on, or on one server, that one server handles, um, let's say, and we have 500 here. Well, that's, that, that's quite a bit of a difference. And that's, that's far more um, interesting to, to, to handle as well. Um, but that's also where some compromises come from. And that's, that's just the physical reason why there is not so much detail, fidelity, and whatever in, in an MMO game normally, like in a, let's say, very specialized game like, like Counter-Strike. Um, or like Quake or something. Um, because when you have to accommodate for, I don't know, one player up to 500, or you just know, well, it's, it's always 15, it's not less and it's not more. You can always, you can, uh, you can, all, you can even do like, like hard coded things because you know it's always 15 players just in case one drops out, but you can ignore that. You could just know, okay, my data structure, that will always, be completely perfect for let's say 15 players and uh, I will just completely optimize it for that case if it's 500 players well you just need to partition it you need to do what I said before if that's the big world you need to send specific updates for specific parts of the world um, and so on and so on and that that's what we will do so <clears throat> to recap <clears throat> and go back to our goals from yesterday so it's getting long already. <clears throat> I'm actually, I'm excited when this thing will crack down, when I will draw and draw and draw. <laughs> Let's see how, how long this works actually. Um, <clears throat> so what we did today is, <clears throat> yeah, we went a bit to the, to the back end to the server. Um, we have, I mean, to say we worked on the gameplay server is a bit, is a bit too too much uh, actually, <laughs> but let's say we we had a start. Okay, um, what we did is really we we worked on the gameplay server and we just made the very first basic part. So like we have a very first version of a working UDP socket. That's very raw. That's totally naive. That cannot really do anything. And yeah, but it's a start. Uh, we did nothing in the user admin space. I mean, what I did, I I posted stuff on GitHub. I, I showed you the. I showed you the um, the link and I think it's just like github.com slash Martin and it's, um, what is it? So I'm not completely sure how it's written now. I think it's MMO from scratch. Okay, so it's MMO underscore from underscore scratch. Okay, so this is where you can see the source code. I will upload it more or less immediately after I have finished this stream now um and yeah so let's see what else did we do um yeah and gwim i i don't know if you have mentioned it but or if you have have recognized it i removed the bell the bell of hell i removed the bell because that was annoying <laughs> to say the least so i i removed this um yeah, and that, that's mainly it. And we made some network theory, a lot of it. I hope it was not too much. Um, yeah, um, I will actually hang out in the chats a bit more time, but I have also some other <laughs> family duties today. It's, it's a holiday here today, so that's why I could stream uh, in the morning. Normally I will try to stream on a daily basis in the evening uh, around eight. And I believe it's now, it's, it's summertime here, so that should be UTC plus two hours. Um, so let's, let's just see. Um, so let's 
probably write an announcement so that normally so today is the 2nd of April so let's say normally that 3rd of April at 20 or 8 p.m. Um, and that's I think UTC plus 2 um, so if, if that's wrong just please let me know <laughs> and then uh, I want to let it a bit open of what we will work on but it will be uh, on networking for sure um, and yeah, I mean, you can also, of course, make make proposals. I mean, that uh, would very much appreciate that. So I have some some ideas. So we could actually work into the client interaction and and yeah, try to exchange some some data, like like getting input from the client and then like getting it to the server and then registering the input and then sending data back and then just moving moving players around i mean that's a very basic thing and we could just try to play around and you could already spend days and weeks and just optimizing that and we might even do that i don't know um or we just go more into the server game and think of how to um how to actually run the, the game loop on the server because that's that's a bit different maybe than on the client uh, that's a bit of different um that's different um Let's say different laws to follow there uh, because on the client okay you run at, at 60 hertz uh, or even more and you really you run your fast 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 you really want to run without any um without any <laughs> any pause without any break um as fast as possible update render as, as quickly as possible but on the server i mean if you do that you would just feel the you would just feel the complete you would feel completely the bandwidth of the network card and, and the same for the for the client it also cannot send an update uh, uh, 60 times a second i mean it can but uh, it, it's just not not efficient so you will have to pack things so we can really think about a lot of things and we might even go into let's say more mmo specific um ideas and strategies because what is much more interesting is like the spatial spatial separation of, of of players and so on because the worlds tend to be much much bigger and so on and so on so you see i mean it's 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 really really like an endless topic i mean it's like well <laughs> it's just um really really big <laughs> and um yeah let's just enjoy the way and uh let's see if we can learn something together and yeah let's Let's call it a day for now. So it's almost 12, that was two hours. I I will plan to, to stream between one and two hours. Um, to be honest, like more is it's really, it's really exhausting to do this kind of live coding stuff. I mean, you really have to concentrate and it, it's really hard. And maybe if I'm, if I'm more fit then I will uh, do longer streams, but uh, I will try to do it between one and two hours. So today I think we reached something that is quite nice. And um, yeah, so, um so thank you all um i'm very happy i i appreciate that i had uh quite some viewers today so that's that's it's really very very nice and it's really motivating and so i wish you a nice day or night depends on where you are in the world and yeah so normally see you next time see you tomorrow goodbye <laughs>